Hey everybody, this is part two of writing exponential equations. In part one, we were just given a couple of coordinates and we solved it and the problems always worked out nice and pretty. That was nice. Um, but today we're going to be doing story problems. Um, and because they are story problems, it's probably not going to work out as pretty. So we have to be really careful with our work to show a, uh, a, a perfect answer. So take a look at this, this question. Uh, you were training for a pizza roll eating competition. During the third training period, you ate 23 pizza rolls. During your eighth training period, you ate 65. Um, assuming that the number of pizza rolls you eat is growing exponentially, we need to write an exponential function to model how many pizza rolls you can eat in a training session. Um, a side note, I was actually in an egg roll eating competition. and. Um, um, and I trained actually at school. I, 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 uh, I, I, I ate as many egg rolls as I could in class. In the competition, I got second place, but I was robbed because a pro showed up. I thought it was going to be an amateur egg roll eating contest. Back to business. Part A. Um, I want to write an equation, and don't forget everybody, every equation needs variables, x and y. And the x and y seems to be like training period is one of the numbers and pizza rolls. And the independent variable would be the, the number of training periods because the number which training period you are on affects the number of pizza rolls that you eat. So x is the training session number. Is that the and the y would be the number of pizza rolls eaten. Hey, do you remember that quiz a little bit ago that a lot of people got threes because they forgot to identify their variables? That's a lack of practice. Make sure you have good practice, everybody. Um, okay, so just like yesterday's problems, um, once you have your, identi your variables identified, you could write some coordinates. So for example, during the third session, I ate 23 pizza rolls. During the eighth training period, I ate 65 pizza rolls. And now this is a pro this is just like part one of yesterday's uh, or of the part one of this lesson. So if you haven't watched part one, maybe you should go back and watch part one. Anyway, this is part two. Um, I start off if, if, I, if I use my examples from from my previous lesson. Um, I always like to plug the larger equation in first. So using um, y equals a times b to the x, I'm going to have 65 equals a times b to the 8. Um, and 23 equals a times b to the third. And let me straighten out the paper for you. When you divide the two equations, you get 65 over 23, which does not divide evenly equals a's cancel out and uh, you get a b to the fifth. And then you do the fifth root, so b is equal to the fifth root of 65 over 23. These problems worked out nicely yesterday. They're not going to work out nicely today. So that is an exact value for... Wait, have I made a mistake? No, I haven't. Let's get back to work. So I have my b. So um, I have y equals a times b to the x, or in this case, y equals a times the fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the x. Um, then I plug in any one of these two coordinates. I always recommend plugging in the smaller one so you get happier numbers. So 23 equals a times fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the power of 3, which means if I divide both sides by this stuff here, which I really can't simplify, um, a is equal to 23 divided by the fifth root of 65 over 23 quantity cubed. I haven't used my calculator yet, um, so my final equation 
is y equals 23 over the fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the third power times the fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the power of x. Okay, this is the exact way of doing this. This is the the superior way of doing this problem. I'm going to show like some calculator shortcuts in a couple minutes, but this is an exact answer. Then you get into part B. How many pizza rolls will you eat during your 90-second training session? So um, I could do that right here on the side. Um, so I'd be have y equals... <laughs> oh, man. I have to write it all out again. Or do I? No, let's start, let's start using our calculator. Do I want to use it yet? Um, yeah? No? I'm debating. I'm sorry. Sorry, students. I'm, I'm debating right now with what the best way of handling this is. Um, no, I think as your math teacher, it's probably best to keep the exact. So I have 23 over the fifth root of 65 over 23, all of that cubed, times the uh, fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the power of, in part B, that was during our 92nd training session, so um, to the 92nd power. Now this is a calculator problem, and I'm so glad I have this calculator here. Um, okay, so order of operations. I have this thing to the 92nd power, but I'm actually going to handle this last. I'm going to start over here with the A stuff. Um, inside the parentheses, I have the fifth root of 65 over 23. So with my calculator, I go 65 divided by 23, I hit enter. That gives me some decimal. I then do the fifth root of that number. So I'm going to take that number and just go to the um, it's fifth root, so it's to the one-fifth power. I'm going to get an answer, and then all of that stuff needs to get cubed, so to the third power. And that's everything that's on the denominator. Then I go 23 divided by that number, so 23 divided by the answer. And that's what this entire number would be, 12.331. Um, then I need to take that number and multiply it by all this stuff. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of side work. I could think of this as 65 over 23 to the 92 over 5 power, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this number that's in my calculator, and I'm going to multiply that times, parentheses, 65 divided by 23, close that parentheses, raise that, to the 92 divided by 5 power, hit enter, and I got way too big of a number. Um, I got 247075, that's just too big. Um, <coughs> oh, it's, oh well, um, 757391, put in some uh, commas, so it looks like we're talking 2,470,757,393,000 pizza rolls. Okay, that would be how you would do this answer, this, this problem complete without with keeping that exact answer as it is. Um, so let's talk decimal approximations then. Um, I could see that you could be working through this problem and that you're sitting here, that you have to do this fifth root of 65 over 23, which would then give you an approximate. So if you did the fifth root on both sides, 65 over 20, oops, so parentheses, 65 divided by 23, um, but it's fifth root, so it's raised to the one-fifth power would give you 1.2309, um, but I like to go to three decimal spots, so I would go one, and then I would just write dot, dot, dot to show that that, that, that number does keep going on forever. 
and I keep that number in my calculator. Keep it right there. Um, then as I get to this next stage, when I rewrite out, write it out here, I write y equals a times, and instead of keeping this exact answer, I have 1.231 dot 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 um, raised to the x. You want to know what? I'm going to say right now, I'm okay with you using a decimal approximation to three decimal spots here. I'm okay with that. I'm going to live with that. Um, but you need to show it in your work. If you don't show it in your work, this is not going to work out. It needs to be three decimal spots and it needs to be rounded correctly. But if you can use that three decimal spots here, um, and then I plug in that second value, so 23 equals A times 1.231 raised to the third power, and then which would mean A is equal to 23 divided by 1.231 to the third power. Um, and if we do that, order of operations, 1.231 raised to the third power is that, and then 23 divided by that is 12.330 if we go to three decimal spots. Um, and A would be an approximate of that. In fact, I should be using approximates for all of these because I've left the exact sector. So then my equation would be y equals 12.330 um, times 1.231 to the x. And then uh, that's it for part A. And then for part B, we would plug in that 90 second session. So 12.330 times 1.231 raised to the 90 second power. And then you can just pop this into your calculator and write it just like that. 12.330 times 1.231 raised to the 90 second power. Your calculator will automatically do order of operations for you. And in that case, I got two four eight one one four zero nine five eight and if we compare that to our exact answer it should be pretty close um, wow look how much um, the decimal approximation affected the answer here I had a uh, two billion four hundred seventy million here I have two billion four hundred eighty one million so just leaving that exact decimal um, affected the answer by, by millions, tens of millions of pizza rolls. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I want to do this last step of this problem. 92 is way too big. What, what if it said something like, um, it gave me the eighth training session. What if instead it said tenth training session? Um, and that's just work in the calculator. And this is fluff, everybody. If you do not need this stuff, I would stop watching if I were you. Um, but if we went with the exact answer and we plugged 10 in, um, I would have 23 over the fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the third power times the fifth root of 65 over 23 raised to the, uh, the tenth. And I guess the whole reason I'm doing this is I'm curious how this would look compared to the decimal approximation answer. Um, if I went to y is approximately 12.330 times 1.231 raised to the 10th power. Um, so this is just a calculator situation. If I work both of these out with my calculator. Um, once again, order of operations here. Um, I could think of this as 65 over 23 raised to the 3 fifths power. So 65 divided by 23, hit enter, raised to the 3 fifths power. Um, then 23 divided by that number, I get this 12.331. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply it. I could view this as being um, 
65 over 23 to be to the 10 fifths power, which of course is just squared, um, 10 fifths power, which is the same thing as 65 over 23 squared. So I can multiply this by 65 divided by 23, close parentheses, squared. And I ended up with 98.44, let me start over, um, 90, well, you wouldn't say, well, in the hot dog eating competition, do they say half a hot dog? I don't think they go. They go by a whole hot dog. So um, you'd have to either answer 98 or 99 here, depending on the situation. Whereas if I did this one, um, just the decimals approximation, so 12.330 times 1.231 raised to the 10th power, and um, I got 98.542. So the answer was pretty darn close. You'd still answer with the 98 or 99. So I guess, so when the numbers are a little bit smaller, this shows how that going with an exact versus going with a decimal approximation isn't that big a deal. So in conclusion, when you are doing these story problems, you have one of two options in terms of how you solve it. You have the option to keep that equation exact, exact, exact. And if you do that, this should be the way that you solve it, getting that answer exactly, ex perfectly exact for the entire problem. But this can be quite a headache. You lose a lot of details. Um, the other option I'd be willing to present to you is this, where um, when, you, when you get to this point and you do this fifth root of B, you'll get a decimal approximation, round up to three decimal spots, use that three decimal spots over here. If you use one or two decimal spots, I will not accept it. I want you to use this. And then once you use this 1.231, ignore the rest of the decimal from here on out. Only use this decimal. So it becomes 1.231 to the third. And when you put this into your calculator, you, um, it rounded to something like that. Um, so then you use the three decimals that you got in, in both in, in, into your equation, um, and then you use that number that way. So either an exact equation or an equation where you round the B and then the A to the third decimal spot. It's your choice. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much for uh, watching both of these lessons, and I hope that it's gone smoothly for you, and there will be a big stack of story problems for you tomorrow to work on. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.